right, there we go. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> how are you? How how's everything on your world? Great. Uh, you know, we're, uh, everything's upside down, of course, being in San Francisco now and uh, with the lockdown and everything. I guess it has its positives also. Like, the sky is so clear, you don't see that usual smog over the skyline. Yeah, uh, yeah, same here, same here, same here. It's so beautiful. It, uh, you know, you, you'd want people, you'd hope people would want this, you know, would remember this and say, I want this. Yeah. I would like to talk about Proposition 215 and how it was written. How it was written. Uh, well, yeah, it was written, it was written over a long period of time. It was written over like an eight month period. It wasn't something that we sat down and jammed this out in a night. The way it worked was we had a commitment. We, we basically realized we were going to have to do this because our bills that we were putting on the governor's desk were getting vetoed. And he was absolutely wrong to do that. There was just no reason to be doing that. It was a bad call. It was the wrong thing to be doing. It worked. And so we had to do something. So we, we switched back to history. And history says the initiative is how you can get around the state legislature. So we knew we were going to have to write an initiative and we we're going to have to collect a lot of signatures. And at that point, the public was following the struggle intensely. So we had a lot of media uh, you know, doing advanced work for us, basically softening waters, letting people know this was going to happen, calling for it to happen. But at that time, this was a statewide struggle, and we'd gone around the state, and, and, and there were activists. At this point, it wasn't one table anymore in a restaurant. At this point, it was the state of California during the AIDS Act uh, crises, and people in every county. The whole civics machine that we have here of county boards of supervisors and hearings and 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 and, and putting out um, uh, resolutions and and endorsing legislation up and then goes up to the state level and the state assembly part and the state and the senate process all of that and pull it together and, and then it goes to the governor and you know he gets pressure from all these different parts of society you know sign it don't sign it let it go whatever and and so all of this comes together and we learn this. So we were working this thing. We had already gotten this whole system to endorse two of our bills and do a lot of work to put the, these two bills on the governor's desk, which he had vetoed. But we learned a lot, and there were a lot of us and a lot of people in a lot of counties that really wanted to see this happen and wanted to see it succeed. Okay, so we started with that, and then we got uh, the folks that the state legislature uses to write all of their laws. There's a group called, you never heard of them, they're called Legislative Council for the State of California. Uh, it, there is a specific history. The idea was to professionalize the legislature. That was the vision when they created this. And it grew to be a large body of lawyers, 50 or 60 lawyers that work in a department down in Sacramento. And whenever a, a member of the legislature, uh, an assemblyman or a senator, wants to put a bill on the floor and get it to the governor's desk, and do, he calls down to these guys. He says, hey, guys. Write me a bill that does the following. And they do it. He can say, write me a bill that says the earth is flat, and they will do it. <laughs> it won't get passed, but they will do it right. They will write it so that it's legally binding, okay? Uh, you know, and they can repeal gravity if they want. It may not work. They can write it legally and give it a number and put it, give it a title and put it in the law books in the right way and write it all the right, correct, every word, and all the everything done right. So we got those guys on board. And uh, you do that. We did that through the offices of Senator Milton Marks, very nice man, gave us direct access to Ledge County. Then we took our ideas and every draft, we took the first draft, second draft, third draft, and we'd send it out to every activist we knew and every person we knew that was concerned anywhere and asked them for their feedback. And we got a lot of feedback. All kinds of people saw all kinds of different things, and some big, some small. We decided that it was medical necessity, so why don't we just write that into the law? That was a, a lawyer in uh, Berkeley named Bill Panzer came up with that idea. So why don't we just write in it? Medical necessity is an established concept, but it also has an established way to, 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 to make it go. Why don't we just add on to that and put our own little asterisks on medical necessity in California and say it applies to pot? We can do that. Let's do it. Then let's see um, Valerie Corral. To cite another example of an activist down in Santa Cruz. She's reading this thing and she sees the stuff about how we put in there that uh, anyone who's a caregiver, anyone responsible for the uh, health, safety, housing, whatever, uh, various categories can bring you your pot and grow your pot for you. Okay, great. But she noticed that we had put and in there. So you had to be responsible for health, safety, and housing. 
Mm-hmm. See? And, and, you know, that's retarded. And she saw that. She said, well, you got to make it or. Just a little switch. Just yeah. a conjunction switch. But it makes it much more powerful. You know, uh, the words, uh, the choice of um, approve or recommend. That was the result of a lot of debate between various lawyers and uh, and, and the, the California Medical Association. Because the law says the doctors can't uh, prescribe pot. It's a federal law. So we couldn't have them prescribe marijuana. So we had to have another way to do it. So we used their First Amendment free speech rights. They can approve of it, your decision, a decision you made, or they can recommend that you do something like, you know, eat healthier, jog, you know, don't smoke or smoke, you know. And uh, so, so this came together from a lot of people. And we took input from all kinds of great people. Some of the best input came from our uh, uh, an electrician, Arlo Hager, a guy from Northern California. He was a musician and also an electrician. So he was down there working on our building, uh, the, the cannabis club, the, the supermarket on Market Street. And he comes into the office to you know check in, say hi, whatever. And we've got this thing. I want to advise that you get the weasel words out. Weasel words. That's what he called him. He says, you know, you've got words in here like, you know, marijuana can be used by people who are seriously ill or are, you know, extraordinarily sick or are very whatever. He said, get all those qualifiers out. Any word that qualifies your intent, get it out. Your intent is, should be clear and straight up and undeniable. And we wanted a law that would stand up in the courts and no one would lose. So that's the kind of the story of, of some of the concerns. It went on like this for several weeks, months of back and forth. We did like 50 or 60 times. We had to go through the council and get permission a second time to go back and uh, continue because people, nobody, nobody does this with them, really pushes them this hard. But we were really concerned because we knew that when this thing was done, we were still going to have an enemy at the gate. So the other guys, you know, weren't going to let, let up, that the other side was always going to be there. And if there was any hole in this thing, they would rush through it and kill us. We worked very hard to do that and involved an awful lot of people. And that's the story. And then what we did was we had Ledge Council do the actual typing and the writing of each thing. Every draft was finally done by them. They would send it to us. And then Dennis was the final approver. For example, he wanted a list of, of uh, certain diseases. He wanted the disease list in there. AIDS, cancer, epilepsy, glaucoma. Uh, but it wasn't limited to those things at all. He wanted to you know, put out a list of things just to give you the idea. Visually. So, you know, everything's in there. But in the end, it was Dennis's call. What, what it was going to say at the end, the final thing was, of course, is, and then take it in there and file. And so that's the story. Sure. For a lot of people poured their hearts into this because it, we all wanted this. This was our, our thing. This was an escape out of jail, but we were all going to get out. Yeah. And we did get out. It was successful. We didn't want to stay there. <laughs> we passed three bills three years in a row with bipartisan Republican and Democratic support only to be vetoed by Governor Wilson. Frustrated, we combined those three bills into one initiative and set about collecting 850,000 signatures to put a proposition on the ballot that will legalize marijuana as a medicine. 